So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. I think it's a perfect time to take a little break. And uh, speaking of break, I just broke this piece right here. Lesson learned. That was on my uh, last cut that I need to make for the uh, doorway. And I should have paid attention. There's a big knot right here. And, you know, I'm cutting out over 50% of the board and it broke right off. So moving forward, I'll make sure to look at that a little bit closer and only use clear pieces with no knots when I'm cutting a section out. Now, besides that little setback right there, everything's going fantastic. I really, really like this stuff. Uh, this is white pine. These are the nice wide boards. I think they finish out at about seven and an eighth or maybe even seven and a quarter. Uh, with this big building and big rooms, I wanted the wider wood. Uh, now, before I started on all this, I checked out one of Kyle's videos from r, &R Buildings. He does this kind of stuff all the time. And I picked up on a few little tricks he does that makes things easier. And I came up with a few on my own that I'll show you. Now this wood is really nice. I mean, it goes together real nice. The tongue and the groove, everything matches up perfectly. But occasionally, you know, you'll put a board up, you'll have just a little bit of a gap where you need to pull it tight. Sometimes if it's down here, you can kind of lean on it before you nail it. But what I started doing with these higher pieces, if I had that little bit of a gap, I'll use a couple clamps. Now I've got several different clamps like this and different lengths and everything, but most of them, you know, they are reversible. You just push that little button right there, put it on this end right here, like so. Then you can use this clamp like so, kind of hard with one hand. And you can apply a little bit of pressure if you have a gap right here. If I need it, you know, I'll put one or two, maybe even three across there. Make sure everything's good before I nail it. But that works out pretty good. Also, if I'm going to uh, tap it with a hammer or something, I always use a piece of scrap. Hit on it if I need to uh, knock one of these boards down just a little bit. But I really haven't had to do much of that. Uh, everything's going together really well. I actually kind of really enjoy doing this you know once you get to the part where it starts looking good I don't know it's just it's nice it is it goes together well uh, doesn't take an awful lot of skill the whole thing is to start out right at the bottom uh, what I did I set my laser up and I've got this whole wall marked over on the other side you know this cuts in goes back over I've got it all marked across the bottom where that first board goes i did that with a laser and then even going across doorways you know i make sure i use like my five foot level and uh everything's good going across i'll tell you what i did one time where i screwed up when i was putting up some uh tongue and groove it was actually tongue and groove cedar not pine and i was using it in our house uh, when we built it years ago and on the one end of the house we have scissor trusses and i have six skylights which i will never do again that's a story for another video. But anyway, I was running this cedar up the ceiling and it was uh, five and a half inches wide, not as wide as this stuff. And in between the skylights, I was cutting all my boards from one long board. And it turns out that one board was about a 16th of an inch wider than the other ones. And by the time I got up to the top, I was all jacked up out of whack. I ended up having to take a few boards out and then I ripped one down, put another bevel edge on it. It came out okay, you'd never notice, but uh, just doing things twice isn't a lot of fun. Something else worth a mention here, I will have uh, one by four trim on both the inside corners and the outside corners. Like right here, you know, I'll run that tongue and groove over this way, then I'll have trim on both sides. I have seen where people put like a mitered corner, corner on here, and I think it does look pretty nice. To me, it looks more modern, I guess you could say. I kind of like the rustic look of the 1x4 trim. And the other reason I didn't want to do the mitered corner, I'm not sure if we're going to air condition the garage or not. I probably will. I'm not sure, though. And this wood will move a little bit, you know what I mean? So if you have that mitered corner where you have a 45 and a nice, you know, comes to a nice point, I think as the humidity rises and drops, you know, the wood moves a little bit, which uh, leads me to my next point. A lot of people said, why I didn't just put all this up? 
and then finish it. Uh, same reason. Uh, you know, the wood will move a little bit depending on the humidity. This could open up just a little bit. If it did, you know, you're going to see like white streaks in here until it closes back up again. I just think it's better pre-finishing it before you put it up. So this piece right here is going to have trim over top of it, so I'll face nail it along here and I'll put a couple in the tongue like I normally do. I don't know if you can see that right there. That's where the uh, nail hole is. You know, you nail on an angle right here, down through the tongue, probably on an angle about like that. That way when the other board sits down on top of it, you will not see any nail marks. These ones here, like I said, will have uh, trim over it. That's why I face nail those ones. All right, I've got all the boards that I had stained and uh, finished up. Tomorrow, I'm going to set up over in the game room. I'll put some tarps down and we'll start a little assembly line process. But the staining is going a little bit quicker when we first started. I wasn't sure. I was thinking this is going to take forever. But once you get a system down, get a bunch of saw horses laid out, uh, get your workflow going, it's not too bad. Even if we were to get 25 or 30 boards done at a time, as long as they are and as wide as they are, that's quite a bit of coverage. This week looks like the weather is going to be pretty wet. They're calling for rain, I think, three Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe even a little bit Thursday. So I'll be spending a lot of time in here. I won't be filming all of it, but I'll give you updates and let you know how I'm progressing. Uh, I think I covered everything that I wanted to. If you have any questions, though, on how I do it or any suggestions on how you do it, let me know in the comments, and I'll report back on that. But I think that's about it for today's video. Appreciate you all being here. And I hope you have a great Labor Day.